Recently, it has become very common, well known, and casual to mock, ridicule, and insult Jesus Christ. In a recently aired South Park episode, Cartman, the lead character, was shown in the nude, holding a cross, mocking Jesus. In this year's Super Bowl 57, NFL player Jamar Hamlin attended wearing a jacket portraying a mocking picture of a crucified Jesus. In a recent edition of the Vanity Fair magazine, a sacrilegious and obscene photo shoot was published in which pop star Madonna derogatively posed as Jesus and his mother Mary. And these are not the only incidents in which celebrities and the media insulted and disrespected Jesus Christ, but there are countless other examples. Jesus, the son of Mary. To Muslims, he is a Messiah, a great prophet of God. And to Christians, a Messiah, son of God, and to some equal to God, who sacrificed himself for the sins of mankind. In Islam, Muslims do not believe Jesus, the son of Mary, sacrificed himself for the sins of mankind. Muslims believe the true Jesus was never crucified and someone else was crucified in his place. There was a mistaken identity. However, even though there are differences in belief between Islam and Christianity and other faiths, Muslims are not allowed to ridicule or insult religious figures of other faiths. Behaving in such manner is condemned in Islam. As Muslims, when we see Jesus, our prophet, a messiah, and their son of God, God, being subject to ridicule, mockery, and insults in Christian majority countries, we're surprised, hurt, and enraged. How can Christians tolerate Jesus belittled like this? How is it possible that anyone can belittle Jesus like this in a Christian majority country? And why would anyone do this? Ridiculing, insulting, and making sacrilegious remarks about sacred religious figures is not freedom of speech. Rather, it is being inconsiderate of someone's beliefs. It is being insensitive and discriminatory. If anyone feels the need to do honest criticism of any religion for social benefit, it can very well be done without condescension. Where are all those defenders of Christianity who are consistently bashing Islam, as they believe bashing Islam is defending Christianity? Where are all those defenders of Christianity who are consistently raising their voices against all social issues, big or small, trying to preach the words of Christ? Why are they not defending Jesus Christ now? Why are they silent? Seeing such acts tolerated by Christians raises the question, do Christians have any respect for Jesus Christ? Who was Jesus and what did he do? After the death of King Solomon, the kingdom of the children of Israel became divided into two kingdoms, Israel and Judah. The northern kingdom, Israel, consisted of 10 of the 12 tribes under King Jeroboam. The northern kingdom deviated from the religion of God and began adopting polytheistic ideas into the religion of God. However, with time, even the southern kingdom, Judah, which consisted of two tribes under the king Rehoboam, also strayed from the way of God, and both these kingdoms came under Hellenistic influence. During the reign of the 14th Davidic king, Manasseh, he had the Torah burned and reinstituted polytheistic worship in the land. King Manasseh ruled for 55 years and was succeeded by his son Ammon, who followed in his footsteps. It was, however, Josiah, the grandson of King Manasseh, with the support of the opposition, assassinated his father Ammon and came into power. And ten years into the rule of Josiah, a new Torah was introduced. But this Torah was questionable as to what changes were made. During the reign of Josiah, the prophet Jeremiah said, How do ye say, We are wise, and the Torah is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. But even this corrupted, interpolated, and changed Torah of the time of Josiah got absolutely lost during the Babylonian invasion around 605 BC. 
During this period of the Babylonian exile of the children of Israel, the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar II destroyed the first temple and the city of Jerusalem and burnt all the scrolls of the Torah. It wasn't until 538 BC, with the rise of the Persian Empire, the Persian king Cyrus, the Messiah, allowed the exiled Jews to return to Jerusalem. And under the insistence of the fifth king Artaxerxes II, who ruled from 465 to 424 BC, Ezra returned to Jerusalem and introduced his very own, another, new Torah. By this point, there is much doubt how much of the original Torah remained, as much of it was lost, and some of it was revised and altered. Moreover, as many foreign powers continued to rule and oppress the children of Israel, they strayed further from the path of God under polytheistic power. And nearly 500 years from Ezra, at a time when the children of Israel were in a difficult situation under Roman polytheistic rule, and the monotheistic religion of God was deviating from its authenticity, the God sent Jesus, peace be upon him, to restore the religion of God to its purity. During the time of Jesus, there were socially accepted scholars amongst the children of Israel, the rabbis and the Pharisees. However, they were dishonest and hypocritical to the teachings of the Torah. They began the practice of money exchange, changing Greek and Roman currency for Jewish currency at the Temple of Jerusalem, and turned the house of God into a house of trade. Jesus consistently rebuked the children of Israel for their hypocrisy and disobedience to God, even cursing them, you hypocrites, you evil and adulterous generation, you serpents, you generations of vipers. Jesus preached to the children of Israel to worship none but the one true God, to believe in the day of judgment, and to maintain the law. He preached to the people to return to the religion of Moses and Abraham, and not to give in to the temptations and influence under polytheistic power and compromise God's approved way of life. But the people did not listen to Jesus. And as time went on, after Jesus, this pure monotheistic religion of God, taught by Jesus, continued to get corrupted not only by foreign polytheistic influence, but also under the corrupt Pharisees, who were highly influenced by Hellenism like Paul. And later, during the time of King Constantine, who combined the religion of Jesus with the Hellenistic religion of the Romans, which was polytheistic and standardized, adopted, and established polytheistic Christianity. In the coming years, the Church devised and developed the doctrines of Trinity, the divinity of Jesus, and the divine nature of his mother Mary, etc. Over centuries, Christianity evolved in the name of Jesus. However, none of these teachings and beliefs had anything to do with Jesus, because Jesus himself never preached such beliefs and ideas. Taking a look into the life of Jesus and his struggles to bring back the children of Israel to the approved way of God, we can see that Jesus was, in fact, a Messiah for the children of Israel. Who is a Messiah? Messiah literally means the Anointed One, or the Chosen One, or the Comforter, and this can be a king, ruler, or leader. And Jesus was their leader. He was teaching them how to preserve their faith under polytheistic power and influence. He was trying to lead the children of Israel back to the religion of God, and had they followed his teachings, he would have been their king. And he was a king for those who were following him. Any intellectual Jew can never refuse the contribution of Jesus for Judaism. In Islam, Muslims believe Jesus, peace be upon him, was a Messiah, a prophet of God, who was sent to guide the children of Israel. As for the Christians, they venerate Jesus to the extent of making him equal to God. Believing that God incarnates as a human being is not part of the religion of Moses, David, or Abraham. Extreme veneration of Jesus to the point of making him partner or equal to the one true God is clearly unauthentic. However, Jesus has to be venerated and respected 
as a prophet and messenger of God, as a Messiah, he was. Now some may ask, was Jesus the prophet, the Messiah, that was meant to liberate the Holy Land from polytheistic rule, after whom there will be no more prophets or divine vision? No, Jesus was not meant to be that prophet or Messiah, and he did not liberate the Holy Land from polytheistic power. In Daniel, book 9, verse 24, Prophet Daniel prophesied about a prophet and Messiah who will seal up the vision and prophecy, meaning after him there will be no more prophets and no one will have divine vision. This prophet and Messiah who will come in the future will come to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins, meaning this person will bring an end to oppression and injustice and establish a society where people will not sin and to make reconciliation for iniquity, meaning everyone will have to face the consequences of their actions and will get what they have earned. Unlike what Christians preach today, that the Messiah sacrificed himself for the sins of mankind, Daniel did not prophesy that the prophet or Messiah will come to die for the sins of mankind. In fact, in Isaiah, book 42, prophet Isaiah prophesied, the final prophet and Messiah will not fail. He will be undefeatable. When it comes to Jesus, he was a prophet, a Messiah, a comforter that the God sent to the children of Israel to guide them and teach them how to remain faithful under polytheistic rule and not compromise God's approved way of life. But Jesus was not the Messiah or the final prophet after whom the vision and prophethood was to end, who was to free the Holy Land from polytheistic rule, and who would be undefeatable. Then who is this last and final prophet and Messiah? For thousands of years, the children of Israel had been crying to God to liberate the Holy Land from polytheistic rule. And it was finally through the guidance and leadership of Prophet Muhammad, his companions and followers, the Muslims, the God fulfilled the prayers of the prophets of old. For the first time in history, the Holy Land was liberated from polytheistic rule. It was the disciples of Prophet Muhammad, Caliph Umar ibn al-Khattab, Commander-in-Chief Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah, and Commander Khalid ibn Walid, and the Muslims who conquered Jerusalem in 638 and became the saviors of the sanctity of the Holy Land. Following the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, the Muslims did not oppress the people, there was no injustice in the land, and Jerusalem was restored to its greatness. Prophet Muhammad was undefeatable, and one of his titles is Mustafa, which means Chosen One or Messiah. Prophet Muhammad is the fulfillment of the prophecies of the last and final prophet, after whom there will be no more prophets, and the Messiah who liberated both holy lands from polytheistic rule, Mecca and Jerusalem, the dwellings of the two sons of Ibrahim, Ismail and Ishaq. Like, share, and subscribe to Truth Shall Prevail.